Hey, thanks for checking out my video. This is just a quick video on how I diagnosed a bad high pressure oil pump on a 6.0 liter power stroke diesel. Um, I know these have been out there for a long time and so a lot of people are pretty comfortable with them. But just the other day we had one towed into our shop from our other location because they weren't sure how to diagnose this problem. And the same day another tech at the location I work at got a six liter power stroke with a similar problem and he wasn't sure how to go about diagnosing that. So I thought this would make a great video. Hopefully this helps. All right, so now we need to uh, monitor some scan data and we can record this data while we're cranking the engine over. Then we can review that data later um, and determine the fault and why our engine won't start. So let's look through some of this scan data here. The first thing I like to look for is CMP and CKP synchronization. So this lets us know that the ECM is seeing both the cam and crank sensors and that they are in synchronization and that's required for this engine to start so we want to make sure that we get a yes signal on that PID. All right, next thing I like to look at is engine revolutions per minute. This engine needs to crank over at at least 150 RPMs or it won't start. So if it's cranking too slow, we want to look at things like um, charging system faults, battery faults, uh, starter issues, but also I've seen um, locked up AC compressor clutches cause them to crank too slow. Um, here we're clicking on injector control pressure and injector control pressure regulator. That injector control pressure we want to make sure will maintain at least 500 PSI to fire these fuel injectors. Next thing I've clicked on here is the FICM or fuel injection control module voltage. Um, this is the output voltage to the injectors and that needs to maintain 48 volts. Pretty common to see that drop around 47. In this case you see we're at 47 and a half. That's all fine. We just want to make sure it's not dropping too low. Now I like to graph as many of these as I can because things like the injection control pressure we want to make sure maintain 500 psi and I've had them hit 500 PSI when you're just looking at them on a PID. So let's go ahead and crank this engine over and watch this data. Okay, now with the screen paused here, we can start to look at some of this data and figure out what's going on. So we see at the top the CMP, CKP synchronization has a value of yes. So we don't have a problem with our camera crank sensors causing this no start. We can see our engine revolutions per minute was 178 RPM. So we're cranking fast enough that this engine should be able to start. Our FICM control voltage is at 48 volts, more than enough to fire these fuel injectors. But if we look down here at our injector control pressure, and really it's called injection control pressure. This is the oil pressure on the high pressure oil system that goes into the fuel injector to create the high pressure fuel inside the injector. We can see we have a value of zero. Now I've been cranking this engine over before I started filming the video and already done some tests so I may have caused that to go to zero. But I was seeing about 12 psi. There was practically nothing. We have almost no oil pressure on the high side, high oil pressure system of this engine. So one thing to keep in mind is that if you watched all of this data and you didn't find the fault, we still have not tested the fuel supply system up to the fuel injectors. So we should be finding, I believe it's about 60 PSI fuel pressure on this engine. You'll want to verify that specification. Uh, but that would be the next test if you found all of this data to be good. So what we need to do now is start to diagnose why we have no high pressure oil on our high pressure system. Now the first thing I want to know when I don't have high pressure oil is does my low side oil pressure system work? Now on this engine it has a normal oil system like any other engine does that supplies oil to that high pressure system. And so a quick test to see if that system's functioning okay is to crank the engine over while we watch this oil gauge on the dash. Now one little note here is that you you know, if you own one of these, you might think you have an oil gauge here because you see that. It really is just a switch. This gauge sits at zero or at low where it's at right now. If it has anywhere from zero to 7.5 PSI, I believe. If it has that 7.5 or higher, it's going to sit in the middle of that gauge. 
So it can't really gauge actual pressure, just do we have pressure or not. So let's crank the engine over and see if our low side builds anything at all. Okay, so we saw in this case that our gauge did not go up, and we cranked the engine over long enough that we should have had something there. Um, but again, like I said, this gauge does not show actual pressure. So we could have had, you know, 5, 6, 7 PSI there, and that gauge wouldn't have budged. So that's a quick test to see if it is good, but just because the gauge doesn't go up does not mean that we don't have oil building in our low side system. So what we need to do now is remove our oil filter and monitor to see if when we crank the engine over the oil filter housing starts to fill up with oil. So let's do that. Now inside the filter housing here is a little valve that's held down when the oil filter is installed and that seals this housing to keep oil inside. When the oil filter is removed that valve is released and allows oil to drain out. So when we're cranking this engine over to look for oil, we need to hold this valve down that you see right here. I just use a long screwdriver. So let's hold this down and crank the engine over. Okay. So you can see that after cranking this engine over for just a little bit, we filled that oil filter housing up. So this might not be a great test of the... Um, volume or pressure of the low side system but we do know that it is supplying oil and that our high pressure system should be building something because it has oil available to it. So the next thing we need to do is pressure test the high pressure oil system because we could have either a bad high pressure oil pump that can't produce oil pressure or we could have a large leak in that system that's causing all the oil pressure to bleed off. Um, chances are, since this one's producing almost no oil pressure, that we have a bad pump because it would take a very large leak to do that, but still we want to be thorough in our diagnosis. So let's uh, pressure test the high pressure oil system. And to do that, first we need to gain access to the injection control pressure regulator because we're going to need to control that and close it, otherwise that would be a leak. So let's find it here. You can see I'm zooming in on it on the engine. It's pretty difficult to access. What I've done here is I've unplugged it and turned the regulator so that the connector is pointing up, making it easier to unplug and plug in our tool. Um, this is a pretty difficult part though. I hate to tell you it's not going to be fun or easy, but that will make it a little easier for you if you just grab a wrench and turn it so that connector is pointing up. Here's a quick look at the tool I'm going to use to control that injection control pressure regulator closed. Um, you don't necessarily have to have this tool, but you need something or some way of controlling it because just supplying power and ground to that regulator can cause it to burn up. So you can see here this one has an on-off control and that is duty cycled. Um, also, it's got a connector here that we plug into the injection control pressure regulator. Um, I've actually broken the tabs off of this one, the locking tabs on the connector, just because it's so difficult to access and I'm only using it for test purposes. I don't need it locked on there, so this makes it a little easier for me. Here's just a quick look at that injection control pressure regulator with the tool plugged into it. So here's a look at a few of the other tools we're going to need. Um, there's obviously many ways to do all these tests. I'm just going to show you the way that I do and that I've had the most luck with. So I like to use a cylinder leakage gauge. Um, again, not necessary, but it's going to let me know how much air I have leaking into the system. If any, I can monitor a gauge. A lot of people will just put shop air onto the um, the oil pressure system and listen for leaks um, and that works fine I just want to know how much air I have uh, so I can determine the size of the leak so I'll use a cylinder leakage tester here also gonna need an extra air line to go between the engine and the tester and then I've got this fitting on the bottom right corner here that uh, threads in to where the oil pressure sensor goes on the engine uh, you'll need to either buy or build your own adapter here. I built one in the past on my own, and it worked okay, but it did leak itself. 
Uh, I finally found a kit I believe I bought from Mac Tools that came with a bunch of different tools for the 6 liter engine and it was fairly inexpensive. This is one of the tools that was in that kit. So here's a look at the location of the oil pressure sensor on this engine. Uh, this is a different location for the middle year 2004 and later engines. So if you're working on a 2003 or early production 2004, the sensor is not going to be in this location, um, but the test procedure is the same. So now we need to install that uh, pressure fitting in where the oil pressure sensor goes. So let's remove that sensor. Again, it's a different location for different model years. Once that's removed, we can install that air pressure test fitting in this slot. All right, next I'm going to connect my short air line here to the pressure fitting on one end. Then we can use shop air and connect it to our cylinder leakage tester here and then we'll want to dial in this gauge. We'll slowly turn up the pressure regulator until the gauge on the right reads at zero PSI. Uh, this is about a 100 PSI leak check. Um, and one thing I've found too in the past is that some of the leaks that you might find in these systems will show better under different pressures. So I always start at the 100 and watch my pressure change. But if you're not seeing the leak, you might want to try changing your pressures to see if it comes up. So now we can connect uh, power and ground to our injection control pressure regulator uh, controller, the tool that we're using here. And then we'll turn that on. Now that's closed our pressure regulator, so our system should be sealed. And we can connect the system to the leakage tester here. Now we're putting 100 PSI of air pressure in the system, and you can see the gauge on the right came up all the way to zero. Uh, usually you'll let that sit for just a little longer if it's not coming up because we have to push the air out of the system and then that's when you'll want to start listening for leaks if you're reading some sort of pressure loss. Uh, in this case we didn't have runnability issues or anything we had an actual no start so we know that we're only looking for a large leak in this example. So if you're looking for a smaller leak, something that's causing a runnability issue or something, you're going to be going about this part of the test a little different. Um, but for our example here, we had a no start. We're expecting to see either a large leak or we have a bad high pressure oil pump. So in this case, it looks like this vehicle needs a high pressure oil pump to fix the problem.